Now that we've done prepaid expenses, we need to move on to accrued expenses. Um, and we should actually see that when we learn what an accrued expense is, we can almost think of it as the exact opposite of a prepaid expense. How so? Well, an accrued expense is when an expense has been incurred or consumed or used, but has not yet been paid. So let's say this is today. We incur an expense here. A period of time goes by and then we pay for it. Um, so that period of time could be a day, a week, a month, a year. But the point is, uh, we incur or consume it before we pay it. So we could say uh, an accrued expense is basically where the business is buying or getting an expense on credit and we'll pay for it later. That was the exact opposite of a prepaid expense. With a prepaid expense, we, we had the payment bit was at the start and then the incurred bit was later. So it is kind of its direct opposite. But this whole buying on credit does sound familiar. We already deal with a transaction where we buy inventory on credit. We do it a lot. And when we do that, it goes to an account called accounts payable. So is that what we're gonna do for an accrued expense? And the answer is no, because it's a little bit different. This topic is called accrued expenses, but when we buy our inventory from a supplier on credit, that's not an expense. That is actually an asset which we would call inventory. So that's a different thing. So we're dealing with expenses in this topic, not assets. And you can tell this is different because with inventory, we get it and then we sell it to a customer. Uh, and then it becomes an expense. But that's not what this uh, topic here is. This is when we actually, on credit, we are buying an expense and not an asset. So what sort of expenses could be accrued expenses? We'll see some common ones that we'll get probably a lot through our textbook in the exam, which are the rent, insurance, phone, internet, advertising, and interest. We better deal with that one. That's a really tough one. So we better do some questions on that. But the point is basically any expense can be accrued. Um, any expense a business could have that it normally pays could be accrued. That's just, it that means that they would uh, incur it first and pay for it later. So what we need to deal with is how we're going to treat it when we do have one. And we're going to call an accrued expense when it is incurred or consumed. We're going to treat it as a current liability. Why? Well, any liability has got to have three things. There's got to be a present obligation to be settled within 12 months. And that obligation is to transfer an economic resource or benefit to another entity. So it's pretty much always cash. And it's got to be the result of a past event. So if, let's take an example. On the 31st of July, the business received its phone or internet bill for July. That was $400. And the phone company says you have until the 14th of August to pay it. That's pretty common how most phone bills work. So here's what we got. We used all our phone and internet during July, but we don't get the bill until the end from Vodafone. And it says, please pay it by the 14th. So it's incurred in July and it will be paid for here. So there's a delay between incurring it and paying it. That is a liability because at balance day here, which is at the end of the month in this case, we have something that we have incurred but not yet paid for. So until it's paid, we need to call it a current liability. Why? Well, let's just do that example in the first column here. The business got its phone bill, uh, internet bill for July for 400. What is the present obligation to settle within 12 months? Well, the obligation is to pay that bill by the 14th of August. How we like what economic benefit are we going to transfer? Well, obviously we'll transfer cash to Vodafone. What was the past event? We used the phone and the internet during July. What about if instead of the phone and internet, it was the rent? So the rent of the business for September was 5,000, but we don't have to pay it until the 9th of October. Well, at the end of September then, we have an obligation. What is that obligation? To pay the rent by the 9th of October. And to settle that uh, obligation, we will transfer an economic resource or benefit, which again will be cash. What was the past event? Well, in that case, we occupy the property during September. So that's just two examples, but the point is no matter what the accrued expense is, whether it could be interest or insurance or absolutely anything, we need to be able to apply the three parts to a liability to it to explain why an accrued expense is actually a current liability.